Lord Jesus, we praise you in this place this morning. We find ourselves alive in you because of your goodness and your greatness and your holiness. Be glorified, Father. And, and sometimes it may be difficult to understand how we can do that. How does that work? How does that look? 
God, all I know is this, is, is that you've called us to love one another and to build one another up. So, God, I pray that you would begin with me and you begin with my friends that are here this morning. God, may we be peacemakers in our community. May we reach out to those that, are, that feel disenfranchised and say, you know what? God loves you just as much as he loves me. Help them understand, help all of us to understand the love that you have shown us even when we didn't deserve it. May we reflect that love ourselves. Be glorified now, Father, as we, as we take this offering. While that's important, God, I think it's so much more important right now that we focus on being a people who love those around us. Help us to show grace. Help us to show mercy. Help us to show your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 John 3, 1 reads, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are.
through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. In our defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. I believe in God our Father. In Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is free in one. I believe in the resurrection, and we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. And I believe in you. We love you and we praise you in this place today. Be with Scott now as he delivers your message. Speak through him, Father, mightily. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone who is willing and agreed said, Amen. Terrorists want us to be afraid. They want us to give in to fear. They want us to lose hope. They want us to think that they possess power. A Christian keeps his eyes on Jesus. A Christian is aware of eternity. A Christian knows that eternal rewards await those who serve God. Terrorists want you to forget about that. They want you to become focused on the things of this world and care only about the things of this world, those things that can be taken from you. As we go through this series, this summer of things terrorists don't want you to know, 
Today we come to a simple truth. They do not want you to know that our eternal judge will give us eternal rewards. Hebrews 6.10 is our text for this morning. One of the things that uh, terrorists use in recruiting, they say, if you come in and join with us as a terrorist group, and if you do something as radical as go blow yourself up in the name of our cause, that then Allah will give you all kinds of great eternal rewards. You don't have to blow yourself up. The scriptures say this, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown Him as you have helped His people and continue to help them. We serve a God of justice. And this is a good day to hold on to that because justice is not always served out in this world and it's never served out as quickly as we would like for it to be. But our God is just. The writer said, God will not forget your work. He notices who you are and what you're doing. And he will not forget the love you have shown him. And look how you show your love to him. As you have helped his people and continue to help them. We cannot let terrorists, we cannot let acts of terror stop us from doing the right thing. And the right thing is to step up and help the people around us. It's difficult to know what suicide bombers really think because, and there's no way to say this without it being a little humorous, it's hard to interview them. I mean, you can talk to someone who's planning to do it, but someone who's actually done it, well, they're hard to find. But a reporter for the London Times back in 2005 found a suicide bomber she could interview. It, it worked like this. He had, uh, all of his life, he had wanted to kill Jews. That was this young man's desire. Uh, she kept his name uh, out of the newspaper article for some obvious reasons. And this was what he wanted to do. And one day, he literally strapped on the bomb vest. He went into a crowd of Jewish people and he detonated his vest. It was faulty. And it didn't go off. But he was committed to the point of being willing to push that button. To kill himself in his extremist cause. Trying to impress his God. Trying to win eternal rewards. But he lived. So she could interview a suicide bomber. And as she talked to him, a, a couple of interesting things came out. One was the, uh, the depth of his spiritual commitment was interesting to read about. The thing that really caught my attention, though, was this, and it comes from a very distorted view of who God is. And what he said was this. He said, He said, there's an impenetrable wall between me and heaven. And and if I kill myself in the cause of Allah, I can get through that wall. Is there an impenetrable wall between you and heaven? (laughs) No. Who took the wall down? Jesus. Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, died on the cross. He paid the price for our sins. And when He did, the veil in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom because God reached down and said, I'm taking that barrier down. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You don't have to blow yourself up to get God's attention. Look back at our text for today. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work. So he's noticing what we're doing. And he will not forget the love we have shown him, that, and we show the love to him by helping his people, who are his people, all people. Love your neighbor as yourself. Who's my neighbor? Can I limit this? Yeah, and that turned ugly, didn't it? 
When Jesus told the story about the guy, that he just went out and found somebody in need. And when he found somebody in need, he found somebody God wanted him to help. And we continue to help them. And what will God do when we continue to help people? He will notice and remember. The whole theology of suicide bombs and suicide bombers is faulty. And <clears throat> it's not even taught in the Koran, much less in our scriptures. Sometimes people will find a single verse somewhere in the Bible and they'll build a whole theology on it and, and it's just wrong. You ever had somebody come to you and say, you know, look, look, the Bible says this right here, and that means, and you're standing there, you're kind of scratching your head like, I don't, that verse, that verse says that, but I don't think it means that, but I'm not sure why. You remember the time it happened when, uh, when Jesus, uh, Satan took Jesus to the edge of the temple, and he said, go ahead, jump, jump off. The Bible says, not a, not a hair on your head, will, you won't be hurt. You remember what Jesus did? Jesus, who'd read the whole book, turned to Satan and said, it also says, do not test the Lord your God. When you're going to talk about what the Bible says, you need to know that the Bible says it, not some isolated verse you've taken out of context and misapplied, says it, or you get in real trouble. And so today, as we talk about We're talking about the eternal rewards that you personally will receive in heaven, okay? We're not talking in generalities here. The rewards that God's going to give you personally that will be yours for all of eternity. I want you, we're not going to look at all the verses about this. We'd be here way too long. The second service would come in and be upset that we're still here. If any of you stayed because you know there will be donuts in your Sunday school classroom. As we come to look at these verses, realize we're looking at just a few. But the idea I'm sharing with you today doesn't come from an isolated verse. It is a clear teaching of the Word of God. Let's look at several verses. Acts chapter 10, verse 4 the Bible says, Cornelius stared at him in fear to, at an angel. Uh, what is it, Lord, he asked? And the angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. And then the angel in uh, verse 31 says, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Did Cornelius blow himself up? Did he sacrifice something? No, you know what he did? He prayed. And God noticed his prayers. And Cornelius was praying for other people, and God noticed that sacrificial act on his part. Do you realize that when we gathered here today, and John led us in that prayer for peace, and many of you lifted up your prayers for the families of the slain officers, that God hears our prayers and will reward us, and will reward us for those prayers? He's rewarding us for our prayers and for our gifts to the poor. People around here give to the poor. Trust me. I run a nonprofit agency that ministers to people in poverty. We have over 1,000 donors to Cornerstone Assistance Network. I know this because I write each of them a thank you note every month. My staff gets on to me when those thank you notes pile up on my desk and I don't get them signed. We have a lot of people who give a lot of stuff to help people in poverty. They give odd stuff. We have a, a, a real estate group, uh, Coldwell Bankers uh, Realtors, uh, all, all throughout Tyler. They're collecting underwear this month. <laughs> you may not be aware of this, but that's a real problem for folks in poverty. They just can't go out and buy a new pair of boxer shorts. So we're collecting them. It's an odd thing to collect. It's a little awkward to collect. But the uh, real estate group is collecting and they're bringing underwear. Does God like it when we do that kind of thing? 
Listen to this verse in Matthew 10, 42. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water, all right, if a cup of cold water counts, a bag of boxers counts, all right? If anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. God is planning to reward you for every good act you've ever done. He's keeping track of it. Your sins, they're forgiven. They're separated from you as far as the east is from the west. The good things you're doing, he's noting, he's remembering. Even if, even if it's just a cup of cold water, he's noticing. Are you aware of this? Is this affecting how you live? Because the suicide bomber is working so hard to get the attention of his God that he thinks he has to physically destroy his life to get the attention of your God. In Christianity, we know better. Our God is watching us, not to condemn us, but to reward us. He's watching us the way a parent watches a child because Jesus taught us he is our heavenly what? Father. And the Father watches the child. And the father is happy when the child does something good. Let's talk about rewards and justice. Second Thessalonians uh, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. The Bible says, God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. When will this happen? This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. The justice will come when eternity begins. There will be a judgment day, and cowardly snipers will be punished. And if he's going to pay back trouble to those who trouble, and he's going to give relief to those who are troubled. And if he's rewarding us, Hebrews 6.10 says, for helping those around us, what kind of reward would he give to a law enforcement officer who peeped who died while protecting people who had gathered to protest that law enforcement officer's existence on the planet. If you're willing to step up and protect the people who are condemning you, are you doing the work of God? Yes, you are. And will God notice? He would notice a cup of cold water. Yes, he will notice. And yes, there will be justice when eternity begins. One of our frustrations as Christians and a mistake that we've made in Christianity uh, throughout time is that we start getting focused on the things of this world rather than the things of eternity. And we start caring about the things of this world rather than the things of God. And we start noticing and, and thinking that, that God's job is to come down and, and heal us physically and give us riches and take care of our lives and protect us from evil. Our job is to go out and serve Him. He wants us to pay attention to eternity. And Jesus kept trying to get people to do that. Uh, the Apostle Paul caught this concept. 2 Timothy 4, 8 says... Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. What's he going to get? A crown. Crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Not to all who have blown themselves up committing an act of terrorism, but to all who have longed for his appearing. It's time for Christians to long for the, appearing to God, uh, the appearance of Jesus. It's time for us to say, God, we're ready for this experiment on earth to end and for eternity to begin. We're ready for the suffering to stop and for your holy will to always be done. 
But Hebrews 11.6 says this, Without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. To come to God, we have to believe not just that He is, but that He is the kind of God who will reward those, not who blow themselves up, but reward those who earnestly seek Him. Are you earnestly seeking Him today? And if you are, notice this, He will reward you for that. The Scripture is trying to get us to take our eyes off of this earth and put our eyes on heaven. To care about the things of heaven more than we care about the things of earth. And to realize that living life is not about accumulating things here. It is about doing the things that God has called us to do. Do you remember that great story in the Bible where the, the man came to Jesus and, and he, he really liked him? And he thought Jesus had a lot of good things to say. And he came to him and he said, you're, you're a good teacher. And I want to live forever in heaven with you. What do I need to do? And what did Jesus say to that rich young ruler? Mark 10, 21 says, Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. We're coming back to the idea of treasure in heaven. The rewards in heaven. So, what kind of faith did the rich young ruler have? Did he believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God? He said he wanted to follow him all the way into heaven. Did he believe that, that Jesus would reward those who earnestly seek him? Or did he love his money more? You know how the story ends. The Bible says he turned away and he was sad because he was what? Very rich. He was sad that he was wealthy. <laughs> he wasn't an American, was he? We pay attention to our possessions. How many of you remember Beanie Babies? Oh, come on. You remember Beanie Babies? The little plush toys? <clears throat> People fought over them. The first time I learned about Beanie, I was in a mall someplace, and, and there was this line of people outside a Hallmark store. What's the, the new birthday cards are being released? I, I'm a curious person. I just walked past the line. I went up to the desk. I said, what's, what's going on? Why are people here? They said, oh, the new Beanie Babies are coming out. Oh, I said, what's a Beanie Baby? They looked at me like I was from Mars, and they told me what a Beanie Baby was and how valuable they were. And, you could buy a little protector to put over the tag. You know what was donated to Cornerstone two weeks ago? Not just underwear. We got a box of Beanie Babies. Yeah, they're as valuable as used underwear now. We're going to have to sell them four for a dollar. They're not worth anything. And Jesus looked at that wealthy man in front of him and he said, do you not realize all your worldly possessions are not worth anything? You've collected beanie babies. <laughs> but I'm going to offer you something. If you'll let go of the things of this world, if you'll let go of your beanie baby collection, I will give you rewards in heaven. And speaking to his disciples on another occasion, Jesus phrased it this way, Matthew 6, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Our God wants to reward us. And He wants us to live a life that is worth rewarding. He wants you to love Him with all your heart, mind, and soul, and He wants you to love your neighbor as yourself. He wants you to quit being so enamored with the things of this world and let go of them. 
and care about the things of heaven. He's not asking you to go blow yourself up, and He's certainly never asking you to destroy the lives of other people. He is asking you to love. And He is saying, if you will do something as simple as, as give a cup of cold water to a thirsty person, I will reward you with eternal rewards. Let's pray together.